All rise. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. We have some people on Zoom here too, so we're going to highlight. Okay, let's uh, let's get on the record, please. Thank you. Okay, we are now on the record in uh, State of Idaho versus Brian C. Koberger, CR 2922-2803. Mr. Koberger is in the courtroom along with his attorney, uh, Ms. Taylor. We also uh, part of the team is uh, Jay Ronston and uh, Elisa Massa, who is participating by Zoom, I believe. Um, the state is represented by Mr. Thompson, Lake Park County Prosecutor's Office, or Prosecuting Attorney. Uh, Ms. Jennings is uh, of that office too, Lake Park County Prosecutor's Office. Also uh, part of that team is Ingrid uh, Beatty and Jeff Nye, uh, both from the Idaho uh, Attorney General's Office. I'm John Judge. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a Latok County District Judge, and I'll be presiding over this case. So, Mr. Koberger, uh, you've already heard a lot of uh, what I'm going to tell you at your initial appearance, um, but I'll repeat it to you because it's important, and I want uh, I want to remind you of of these uh, issues. So I'll uh, briefly cover your rights, the charges against you, and the maximum penalties if you are found guilty or if you plead guilty. So I'm going to start with the rights. You have a constitutional right to have an attorney represent you throughout these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, then one is appointed at public expense. Uh, Ms. Taylor and her team have already been appointed, so that's taken care of. You have a right to a speedy and public jury trial where the uh, state would be required to prove every element of each charge against you beyond a reasonable doubt. At that trial, you would have the right to cross-examine the witnesses called against you. That means to see, hear, and question them, to call witnesses to testify for you, and if you choose to, to testify in your own defense. But you're not required to testify because you also have a right of silence. That right is protected under the Idaho and federal constitutions, so you can remain silent throughout these court proceedings, and that can't be held against you in any way. What you, need, what you do need to remember, though, is that anything you do say other than to your lawyers could be used against you, against you in a later uh, court proceeding. You understand that? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. You also have a right to, to uh, appeal any final decision of the court. In order to exercise that right, you need to file a notice of appeal within 42 days of that final decision or that uh, right is waived. Also, if you are not a United States citizen, any finding of guilt in this state could have adverse consequences to your legal status. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Any questions about the rights? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. So um, let's go to the uh, indictment. Do you have a copy of the indictment in front of you? Yes. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> you see in the hit heading, uh, your name there, is that your correctly spelled uh, complete name? Yes, it is. Is that the correct uh, birth date underneath your name? Yes. Are those the correct last four digits of your social security number? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm going to read you uh, the charges on the indictment, starting with count one, burglary. That is a felony under Idaho Code section 18-1401 and 1401-2. 
1403. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did unlawfully enter a residence located at 1122 King Road, Moscow, with the intent to commit the felony crime of murder. Count two, murder in the first degree. That was a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan a human being by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. Count three, murder in the first degree, a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Kayla Gonzalez, a human being, by stabbing Kayla or Kayla Gonzalez, from which she died. Count four: murder in the first degree. That's a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. Alleging that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Lake County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Zena Pernodal. Excuse me. This is hard. I'm sorry. Zena Zena Pernodal, a human being, by stabbing. Zena Kernodal, from which she died. Count five, murder in the first degree. This is a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation, and with malice of forethought kill and murder Ethan Chapin, a human being, by stabbing Ethan Chapin, from which he died. This is signed on May 16, 2023, by the presiding grand juror. So now I'm going to go to the maximum penalties of each charge, uh, starting with count one, burglary, minimum one year, uh, in up to 10 years in imprisonment, fine of up to $50,000 or both fine and imprisonment, restitution for the victim's economic losses resulting from the crime. For counts two, three, four, and five, murder in the first degree, maximum penalties, life in prison, or the death penalty. Fine of up to $50,000, a fine and life in prison with a death penalty. Restitution for the victim's economic losses resulting from the crime. Also, additional fine of up to $5,000 to be paid directly to the victim's families. If you are found guilty or plead guilty on each charge and the maximum sentences are imposed consecutively, that means one right after the other, you could be facing 10 years in prison, followed by four consecutive life uh, sentences or death penalty, fines of up to $200,000 and $20,000 to be paid directly to the families with any restitution uh, resulting from the crimes. Okay. Burger, do you understand the charge in count one? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do 
Do you understand the charge in count two, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count three, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count four, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count five, murder yes. in the first degree? Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. And Ms. Taylor, is Mr. Koberger prepared to plead to these charges? Your Honor, we will be standing silent. Okay, because uh, Mr. Koberger is standing silent, uh, I'm going to enter not guilty pleas on each charge. Counts one, two, three, four, and five. Now at this juncture, uh, the state has 60 days to give notice of intention to seek the death penalty. And uh, Mr. Koberger has a constitutional and statutory right to a speedy trial. So let's start uh, with you, Ms. Taylor, and then Mr. Thompson uh, to discuss uh, scheduling. Your Honor, we'd ask the court to set this trial at the very outside of the speedy trial, right? We're not prepared to do anything but ask the court to do that today. Okay. I have to count it out when that would be November. I have not counted it out, Your Honor, but I believe that would be about November 22nd, and it's going to be around. Maybe November 22nd. So I'd ask the court to set it for an October trial. How long do you think it will take to try the case? My best guess is it would take at least four weeks, maybe six. So you'd like me to set this for a six-week trial? At this point, I would, not. So I will have to get rid of some of the other three trials I have, but uh, this is more critical and more important. So, Mr. Thompson, what's your <coughs> Those trial dates are workable to the state judge. About October 2nd, starting at 3 in the morning. Yes, sir. Okay, for six weeks. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else we need to address with the Taylor? Not with regards to the trial setting. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Thompson? Nothing to say at this time, though. All right, so um, with that, um, by the way, I do want to let everybody know, if they don't already know this, uh, that once the grand jury issued the indictment, a uh, preliminary hearing scheduled to start on June 26 was no longer needed and was vacated. So some people are confused about that. Uh, so I think, uh, Thank council uh, and I uh, and the media and the public for your attention and respect. So uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.